Welcome to Speedtree Getting Started. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the modeler and show you some modeling basics. For demoing purposes, I'm going to start off by making a really basic tree. I'm going to do this by going to our generation window, right clicking, going to add geometry to selected, and selecting our trunk generator. You can also add generators by going to the add icon in the generation toolbar or going to the toolbar above the viewport and selecting the tree with the plus sign icon. Now I'm going to edit my trunk. I'm going to go to the property bar on the left hand side, go to my spines group and alter the length absolute value. I'm going to go down because I want to make my trunk a little shorter. Now I'm going to make the top of the trunk a little fatter. I'm going to go to skin, radius, and I'm going to push up the right hand side of my blue curve. And also you see here, this is the flares. I want to reduce how fat they are. So I'm going to go to my flares radius and reduce this. Now I'm going to push the flares up by going up in the height value and I'm going to pinch it in a little bit. Now that I have a basic trunk shape, the next thing I'm going to do is add branches. I'm going to go back to my generation window, right click, and I'm going to add our big branches template. You'll notice there seems to be this empty spot at the top of the trunk. You can either add a cap generator to that or choose to go to extend parent and change it from none to any. This is basically telling it to grow a branch from that spot. Another type of branch template you can use is our bifurcated branches. With bifurcated branches, the child branch basically grows on the bend of the parent branch. You can alter where it grows by going to the parent branch's spine group noise group and increase the turbulence or the amount. You'll notice when I increase and decrease the late amount, the branches change position depending on the bend of the parent. To save on time, I'm going to just duplicate the bifurcated branches and attach it on the parent. You'll notice it's kind of long, so I'm going to go to spine and I'm going to reduce the spine amount. A little bit smaller. Okay. Next, I'm going to add the twigs generator. I'm going to go back to my add geometry selected and I'm selecting my twigs. You'll notice it seems to be three at the top. I'm going to change this by going to the generation group. I'm going to increase the frequency. That way, I have more twigs on the branches. And then I'm going to add some spread. That way, they're not all bunched together on the same plane. Next, I'm going to spiral them a little bit. Now, I'm going to go to spine and I'm going to make them a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this now. As you can see, we now have a tree with a semi-complicated branch structure. I'm going to add bark material to this. I'll go to the materials tab and then select the plus minus icon and then I'm going to say add new. Now I'm selecting OK and I'm going to go to color and I'm going to select my bark texture. So you get this pop-up that asks if it should assign the materials to the corresponding spots and I'm going to say OK because this saves me time and automatically loads them for me. It's always good practice to name your material so I'm going to go back to the plus and minus icon I'm going to select the material and rename it to Bark. Okay, it's renamed. So I'm going to go back to the property bar on the left hand side. I'm going to go to the materials group and change it from inherited to Bark. This automatically applies to all the generators because they are all set on inherited. Now that the Bark is assigned, we can now edit the UV mapping of the trunk. Let's say if I want it smaller or if I want it bigger. For this case, let's make it bigger. I'm going to go to our UV mapping group section in the property bar and I'm going to alter the U absolute. If I go to zero, you'll notice that the UV texture will get bigger. But if I change it to two, you'll notice that the amount of times it wraps increases. But for this demo, as I mentioned, I want it smaller. You can do this for all the branch generators. In this case, let's make them smaller. Okay, time to add the leaves. So I'm going to go to my generation window, right click, 
go to add geometry and I'm going to choose our branch leaves generator. I'm using branch leaves because it computes a lot faster than leaf mesh generator. The reason is because in leaf mesh, it stores the data so you can node edit. However, in batch leaves, it doesn't. You will also notice that the default mesh created for the leaves is this flat plane. So if you want to incorporate your own mesh, you can import it or you can actually create your mesh inside the Speedtree modeler. So now to add a leaf material, I'm going to go to the plus minus icon and select add new. I'm going to rename this leaf. Press OK. I'm going to select my leaf material. It's going to load. I say OK. And I'm going to decrease the gloss a little bit. To apply the material, I'm going to go to the leaves group in our property bar and change it from none to leaf material. So you'll notice that in our leaves, there seems to be these areas where the texture isn't applied. That is because two-sided isn't enabled in the leaf material. Once you enable two-sided, it applies the material to both sides of the mesh. You can see I increased the amount of leaves, so now I'm going to add a mesh to the leaves. I can do this by going to the leaf material in the material tab and then selecting this edit button right here. As you can see, an edit cutout window will appear. This basically allows me to cut out a mesh in the material that I selected edit in. I'm now going to cut out a mesh to the leaf material. And you will notice I'm going to be making three meshes, a high, medium, and low. That is because uh, we have high, medium, and low resolutions. So we, right here in the toolbar. Uh, so when I assign these meshes and I change the resolutions, the meshes will automatically change with the resolution and it will decrease or increase the triangle count. So that way I basically have three different triangle count trees created. Let me just finish this low. Okay. Here are our leaves on the tree. You can see the mesh is automatically applied. It's not those planes. I'm going to now focus on the branch so we can see the leaf structure better. It's kind of chaotic, so I select the branch and I'm going to go to the eyeball icon in the toolbar. I'm going to select it and I'm going to say focus. As you can see, here's our branch and it's isolated. Now I'm going to alter the shape of the leaves. I go to local orientation. I'm adjusting alignment so it pushes the leaves closer together. Then I'm going to go to the green curve and I'm going to push the left hand side down a little bit. That way at top the leaves are close and towards the back of the twig the leaves are further apart. Next I'm going to add some shape to the leaves. I'm going to add some fold. you notice it folds. A curl. I'm going to adjust the green curve to, so it curves in one direction towards the tip and then another direction towards the bottom. I'm going to add a small twist value. And the plus and minus is variance. I'm going to add a variance on all the leaves. That way it breaks up the repetitiveness. I usually tend to keep it around 0.1 to 0.2. Let's just add them. Okay, so here's our tree with the leaves. I'm going to unfocus now. So I go to the eyeball icon and I say clear focus or I hit control F. Okay, here's our tree. I'm now going to reset the camera. Now that's all set up, I'm going to apply Win. I'm going to go to Tools in our menu bar and I'm going to click Win Wizard. It basically sets the controls for you. Uh, you can choose from the different templates. I'm going to choose Ornamental Cultivated Tree. I'm going to say OK. As you can see, the tree is moving in the wind. Now let's say you didn't like something about the tree movement. You can click on the fan icon. 
let's say the trunk. The trunk seems to move a lot in this tree. I'm going to go to my settings and I'm actually going to alter the shared parameters. The shared is applied to the whole tree. You notice trunk doesn't have one enabled. So I'm just going to decrease these parameters so the trunk doesn't move as much. Okay. And you see we have uh, four levels of wind. Those correspond with the levels applied to the branches. One, two, three, four. And if you want to alter the leaf movement, you will go to the leaf motion. You can alter the bend, the frequency, the flutter of the leaf. So you have a lot of options. I'm going to disable the wind now. Uh, here's our tree. It's basically done. Uh, the last thing I'll do is apply ambient occlusion. I go to the post group and I'm going to select the three ball icon. This computes the AO. And if I don't like it and I want to adjust it, I just select the light icon. And then I go to the ambient occlusion group right here. That is it for our video. I hope this gives you a better understanding of the modeler and its tools. You can find more information in our documentation and you can find more tutorials on our YouTube page.